The EBR-2 operated for 30 years. During this time, normal operations required that the reactor be refueled. This required reactor operators to move sub-assemblies containing fuel in and out of the reactor core. The table to your left contains three of these sub-assemblies. Moving sub-assemblies involved a precise sequence of steps, which operators managed at this control panel. Before a sub-assembly could be moved, the reactor was shut down. Then, in sequence A, the reactor was unsealed. The reactor cover raised, and the gripper jaws tested. In sequence B, the gripper was rotated to a position over the subassembly that needed to be moved. The gripper raised the selected subassembly, then rotated to carry it to the slot in the side of the reactor. In sequence C, the subassembly was transferred from the gripper to the transfer arm. Finally, in sequence D, the transfer arm placed the subassembly in the storage basket, where it would cool and later be transferred out of the primary tank. You can try the sequence yourself by pressing the flashing button on the panel. This will play excerpts from the actual training film that was used to train EBR2 reactor operators. This film was shot before the primary tank was filled with sodium. Operators could not see the movement of subassemblies in the reactor, so they had to rely on this fuel handling console to successfully complete this complicated procedure. This simulated exercise takes about five minutes. Start by pushing the flashing button on the control panel. Raise the cover. The cover is lifted well above the reactor vessel to allow clearance for the transfer arm to swing a subassembly. Notice the slot in the neutron shield through which the lower adapter of the subassembly will pass while on the transfer arm. The gripper is raised to up. This sets the pull force limiter and cleans the gripper. Then the jaws are opened to release the control rods. The rod jaws are then closed and reopened as a final check that all control rods have been released. As the plugs rotate, the gripper rotates to maintain alignment with the slot in the subassembly adapter. The final positions are also numerically displayed on the fuel handling console. As the gripper reaches the subassembly, a blade on the sense rod engages the slot in the adapter. The blade maintains proper rotational orientation of the subassembly. Close gripper jaws. Gripper to up. This lifts the subassembly clear of the core. When the lower adapter reaches the hold down, the hold down automatically moves up and comes to rest with the subassembly. The hold down provides lateral support during plug rotation. Sequence B is complete. The plugs are rotated to move the subassembly to the transfer position. As the plugs rotate to transfer, the gripper rotates. This lines up the flat portion of the upper adapter so it can be received by the slot in the carrier block of the transfer arm. The fuel handler at the capstan moves the transfer arm from its pre-transfer storage position to the subassembly on the gripper. The subassembly is locked on the transfer arm by inserting a pin across the carrier block opening. Opening the gripper jaws releases the subassembly. It is now supported only by the transfer arm. The basket is rotated. 
to align the proper basket hole with the subassembly. The basket is then raised to engage elevation. In this position, the transfer arm with the subassembly is raised to lower rotate. When the basket is moved up the final few inches, the subassembly is supported by the storage basket. Then, to conclude sequence D, the transfer arm is unlocked and moved to pre-transfer. And the storage basket is run down to 94 inches. Sequence D is complete. Congratulations! You have successfully moved a sub-assembly containing fuel out of the reactor. This sub-assembly can now be transferred to the fuel recycle facility for recovery of unused fuel.